President Biden finally gave his first public address since his alarming debate performance against President Trump. He condemned the Supreme Court's immunity ruling in a five-minute scripted speech and ended by ignoring reporters' questions. I dissent. May God bless you all, and may God help preserve our democracy. Thank you. May God protect our troops. Host on Outkick.com, and she joins me now. Tommy, good morning to you. So, uh, this was supposed to be a big moment for the president. It was his first uh, nationally televised remark since his debate performance, and it's clear that Democrats are trying to wage a campaign against the Supreme Court and call Donald Trump an even bigger existential threat than before. So, what do you think about this? Do you think that the speech that uh, President Biden delivered yesterday will rally Democrats back to him? Carly, this is all they have, is the fear tactics, and they keep trying to beat this drum of democracy in danger, obviously gaslighting the American people that the real reason that democracy is in danger is because the Democrat Party and leftist media has been waging a campaign to jail their political opponent. But that just kind of skips right over them, the small little details there that are important in understanding the full situation. But I'll also say this about President Biden's address. You know, if you're trying to convince people that you are, in fact, fully capable and your cognitive abilities are not impaired, going out and delivering a teleprompter speech and then taking no questions is probably not the best way to do that. If you really want to prove to people what he has said over and over again, quote, watch me, then maybe go and take extemporaneous questions, maybe give a speech that's off the teleprompter, at least partially. But he is unable and incapable of doing that. So they trot him out there to get a sound bite. They hope that he can stay on message and on prompter for five minutes and then go back to nappy time. So if he's trying to use this speech or his handlers are trying to use this speech to convince anybody that this is proof that Joe Biden is back, I'm not sure they accomplished that goal. Yeah. Well, okay. So this was a scripted speech. It was very short uh, it, for obvious reasons. I think that his campaign and, and the White House is trying to insulate him from any sort of uh, immediate slip up after the debate. But Axios is also reporting that President Biden could hold a town hall, one big one on one interview uh, later this month so that he can try to prove to the American people that he could still be president. That's a risk. How do you think that could go? It's a giant risk. Listen, there have been times when Joe Biden is able to be on his game for a period of time, but we know from other reporting that it's a very certain and very specific time. So I would expect any town hall or any interview that takes place to happen probably between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. when his handlers say he's actually on his game. So that's what I would expect from that kind of a performance. And if it is an interview, I would expect that it's going to be very curated, that the media is going to be very delicate with President Joe Biden, I don't think it's going to convince anybody. You can't have so many slip-ups back-to-back and have them escalate over the last three years and then do one town hall or one sit-down and smooth over concerns. I don't think anybody's buying at this point. I think we've reached the point of no return with this narrative. Yeah, and on this immunity ruling yesterday, a lot of Democrat reaction coming after the Supreme Court made this ruling on partial immunity for, uh, for former President Trump and all future presidents as well. AOC not happy about this. She posted this on X. The Supreme Court has been consumed by a corruption crisis beyond its control. Today's ruling represents an assault on American democracy. It is up to Congress to defend our nation from this authoritarian capture. I intend on filing articles of impeachment upon our return. So she's saying that she's going to file articles against the Supreme Court. Is this going anywhere? Oh, I would like to see Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez file anything. I don't have a lot of confidence in her ability here. But I think what you're really seeing is that the Democrats' abortion message has really fallen flat, especially due to Donald Trump's wonderful answer to that question at the debate last week. So now they have to beat a different drum, and they're going back to democracy at stake, and they will use the Supreme Court because that will be their new line. They will say democracy is under threat. They can point to something like the Supreme Court decision and hope that 
Low information, viewers and voters are tricked and fooled by that. Anybody that takes a little time to look into it knows it's incredibly nuanced, knows that it doesn't just give the president kingmaker powers, but they have to do something because their candidate is their candidate and their record is their record. So this is going to be the new narrative for the next several months. You yeah. can bet on that. Yeah. Well, some Democrats, Tommy, are saying democracy is under threat. Others are saying, well, that may be true. Uh, President Biden is our bigger issue, including James Carville, who's an important voice within the Democratic Party. Take a listen to what he had to say yesterday. Watch this. We have a country that 72 percent want something different. If the Democratic Party can't produce something different that 72 percent of people want, then why do we exist? What are we here for? I, I mean, the country is clamoring for change. And, and what are we going to offer them? The same stuff? It doesn't make any sense, Jake. And he said that we're also learning that Gavin Newsom is headed to New Hampshire, the all-important state of New Hampshire, to canvas for Joe Biden. But, of course, this is fueling more speculation about whether or not he could be Biden's replacement. What do you think? Well, you know that that's been my long-held position, that Governor Gavin Newsom is going to be the step in. But he's been doing these campaign-type events for at least the last eight months, if not longer. That's why I have maintained that he will be the one to step in. He will be the candidate. He will be the nominee, because he's the one that has done the legwork. He has gone on international trips. He has gone to red states. He's proposed a constitutional amendment for gun control. He follows President Joe Biden around like a little puppy, and now he's going to New Hampshire? I mean, come on, Governor Newsom. If you're trying to fool people, at least disguise it a little better. Don't make it so easy for me to say I told you so. Yeah, he did look very comfortable when he had his jacket slung over his shoulder during that White House visit last year. Tommy, got to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.